Welcome back guys. In this lecture, we're going to be working with variables. So again, this is section three, lecture three. So what are variables? Well, a variable is just a name for a container that holds one or more values in memory in your computer or RAM. So the name of the variable stays the same throughout the entire program during its runtime or as long as the program is executing. But the value contained in that variable typically can change over and over again throughout the execution of the program. So for example, if you want to modify the value, you can still use the same variable name with that different or existing value that's been modified. A variable holds, of course, single or more values. Variable names begin with a dollar sign in Perl followed by a given name. So let's talk a little bit more about variables. So it's called a Perl identifier. And a Perl identifier is just a letter or underscore and then possibly more letters or digits or underscores that we can name our container or our variable name. So the beginning of a variable name cannot start with a digit or a number. Variables in Perl are always referenced with a leading dollar sign. And the dollar sign just lets Perl know that this is going to be a variable to contain a value or more values. Of course, you use the dollar sign to get the value of a variable as well. But it says to leave off the, um, the dollar sign to assign a new value, but I've tested it and it gave me a compile error. So for right now, just skip the do dollar sign off to assign a new value. We're going to always use the dollar sign to retrieve values and to assign new existing values. So again, variable assignment you assign a value to the variable. And the Perl assignment operator is just the equal sign. So interpolation of variables into strings. When a string literal is double quoted, it is subject to variable interpolation. This just means that any variable name inside the double, double quoted string will replace the variable name with its current value or its current values. So let's go ahead and jump in and do some nice and fun examples. So let's begin by setting up and declaring some variables. So again, we start our variable with a dollar sign. And we can name our variable anything, but it cannot start with the digit. So let's just name it variable one or variable underscore one. And we want to set the value, let's say to a double quoted string. This is variable one. And of course we want to use our fancy new line characters to have it neatly output it. Okay, and again, we're using the equal sign to assign this value into our variable or container called variable underscore zero one. So let's just copy a few of these lines and I'll just rename rename it 02 and 03 for right now. And again, I'm just setting up some some variables. And let's say for variable underscore three, let's just give this a number value, 88. So I'll do that. And I'll just, let's say, print out some information. So we use our print statement 
and we want to see the value that's inside or stored inside our container or variable that's called variable underscore zero one. So we can copy that and paste it into our print operator. And as we can see, we want to retrieve the value. That's why we're using the dollar sign with our variable name. And if we save our work and we click run, run script, and let's see what happens. Look what we have. We printed out the value. This is variable one. Okay. So let's just try another one which is 03, which should just give us 88. So if we click run script, there, there it is again, 88, press any key to continue. So we know that if we use these variables, we can print out the values. Now let's say if we put these variables inside double quotation marks, so let me just surround these by double quotation marks. And I'll put this one in as well. Well, let's say variable two. So I'm going to ask Pearl, hey, can you replace this variable name with its value, which is set to 88, give it a space, and replace this variable zero two with the value of this is variable two. So we save our work. We click run, run script or F5. And that's exactly what it does. So again, we're using and we're, we're using variable interpolation. And like, like I said, again, what that does is that we can use the variable name and it replaces it with a value with its value. So let's just say if we used single quotation marks and let's see what happens here so if we save our work click run with the single quotation marks look at the big difference Pearl said hey since you actually only put the, the single quotation marks I'm gonna read your text as literal so it's it's given us as what we type so dollar sign variable underscore three space variable underscore two is what's going to be printed out because we're telling Perl to print out literally what we type in but it, but again the power of variable interpolation and the double quotes it replaces the the variables with its current value which is really nice and pretty nifty as well. So again, we're just set setting up some var variables and we're just assigning variables to values. That's pretty much all that variables does. We're just assigning values to the container to use the values for later use. So again, watch this. I'm, I want to do some math operations so I'll take variable underscore three multiply it by variable underscore five so what Perl is doing behind the scenes is saying hey I see this and I'm going to replace variable underscore three with 88 and I'm going to multiply it by 77 because it's it's replacing the value as well and this is on a mathematical operation. So we run it, we go up, click run, run script, and look what we have. We have our multiplication output, which is 6,776. So congratulations, guys. Um, I hope you guys learned something. If you guys have questions, let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next lecture.